All right, so we've talked about putting audio on an audio channel and using a MIDI channel in a very basic manner. We are going to talk about this a little more, but let's first check out the interface. So what we see over here on the left-hand side, we have our browser, which contains sounds and more sounds, instruments, effects for audio, effects for MIDI, and max for live is not being covered over here, plugins like third-party plugins, third-party devices, instruments and effects. And down here you can put in your own places like your own sample library where you have a couple of audio files put in a folder and then you just add that folder over here. Hovering over it will show you the information again. If you add folders over here you can put in your own sounds just that, like I did before with those drum sounds over here. I took them from a folder where I created those samples myself. But you can also buy samples, like for example drum samples are a typical thing you would buy. For example we offer this the premium drum sample pack over here where you then can browse through a couple of kick sounds and clap sounds And all this is audio information. You can drag on audio channels or it's also possible to use them on MIDI channels in a different setup. We are going to talk about that. Anyway, so you have those sounds over here. You can define your own places. You can also use the Ableton instruments I'm using Suite over here, Ableton Live Suite 9. So we have several instruments that ship with Ableton like analog, operator, simpler and sampler. You can drag this simpler instrument onto a MIDI channel and then use it on a MIDI channel. And now it will tell us this is actually a device where you can drop in audio and then play it back the way you want with your keyboard or something. Audio effects are actually manipulating sound that's already there, so that's already been created. So for example, if I were to go on this audio channel over here and drop an audio effect on the channel, like a simple delay or something, let's take a delay and drop it onto this beat audio channel. So you see, you have a delay on that sound. If I put it off, it's not active. If I activate it, it will be used over here in the way I'm going to use it with feedback, dry wet and all those knobs over there. So this is basically the device used on the specific track that you select. Select those tracks and it will show you the device you're using down here in the device view and if you hop over here you can see the clip waveform and you can toggle and go back to the device view. So those are the two views you are getting for every channel. Devices and what's inside the channel, what's actually played, what manipulates my sound and what is the sound made of itself. If I go onto this clip over here, I still have no clip, but if I double click into this area over here, it creates a new MIDI clip. So this is MIDI node information actually. And now I can double click on a node over here and it will draw this node in there. So you see I just double clicked on this node and it drew it in there. And um, if I hover over this area next to the piano row, I can zoom in and zoom out by clicking into it, holding the mouse and dragging it left and right. If I go into this area over here, you can also see the magnifier showing up and I can drag the mouse down and drag it up to zoom out. Zoom in, dragging the mouse down, zoom out, dragging it up. That's maybe a little bit unusual for users that are new to Ableton, but it works really nicely after you get a little bit used to it. So now we have a MIDI clip going on over here. 
you can actually go into this area, right click and rename it to MIDI clip. And down here you can adjust your volumes. Double clicking on this channel will show you the devices or you just toggle down here, taking this delay off for now, playing back everything over here in the transport view. Let's select a note that's a little lower. We still have MIDI effects over here, which are applied in front of the devices. So MIDI effects manipulate the MIDI signal and audio effects manipulate the audio signal. So if we quickly drag on some MIDI effect and put it in front of this analog over here, and then we go into this MIDI clip and drag this note a little longer. See it's looping. If this knob is active it will always loop and this is now our MIDI effect working we select this arpeggiator if we open up the arrow it actually shows us several presets or options like predefined settings for this effect descending let's put in descending chords So classic up and down will take your note up and down. So this affects the MIDI note, basically. You can do this by your hand, doing it by yourself, or have an effect do it. This comes before the actual sound is being created. So we have the MIDI information, we apply the effect, we tell it, okay, this MIDI information goes up and down, and then we send it into an instrument, and that generates the sound and outputs the sound over here. So this chain goes from left to right. Now we can also put an audio effect onto this channel and place it behind this instrument. For example, a reverb, which will create more room. So this is how the effect chain will always work in Ableton. You first start with MIDI effects, if you use any. Then you have an instrument or something that plays your sound. And then you have the audio effect manipulating your sound. And this could be a third-party plugin or any VST synthesizer or it's something from Ableton itself. Also in the browser, you have your plugin section where you have third-party plugins. If you have any on your computer, you need to check in the preferences. Go to um, File Folder and you can see Plugin Sources. You need to select a folder where Ableton can find your plugins. So you can say uh, use VST system folders or use VST in custom folder. If you activate this, you need to browse to that folder. But I'm using the system folder and it's activated over here. And if you don't see any plugins, you need to rescan your plugins. Install them and then rescan. This setting is active and we can now open our VST plugins. I have a couple of plugins over here listed. And we can drag an instrument, for example, a synthesizer I'm using a lot, third-party plugin from Native Instruments called Massive. And we can just drag that one into a gray area to create a new channel or onto an existing channel, like that one, for example. And just drag it on top of this instrument 
and it will delete the other one and put in this instrument. So this now is a third party plugin running in Ableton and right now it has no presets loaded so no settings for this sound loaded so it will play the very very basic default sound. If we hit a note on our MIDI controller for example or if we double click in this area over here create a clip and if you have this headphone activated it will play something if you don't have it activated it doesn't play dragging down the volume a bit so how do we uh, load a preset if we have any presets we can go to our browser and i'm using a sound from one of our massive preset packs i'm going to use just load up a Verly style pad sound over here. And now this synthesizer is playing that sound. I can close it. That sound will now be applied on this MIDI channel over here. I'm going to quickly select a MIDI clip from the browser. We can go on. We have covered instruments, audio effects, MIDI effects, plugins. So those could be instruments or effects. So what I've loaded is an instrument, but you could also load another delay effect or equalizer or something and put that on a MIDI or an audio channel as well. User library shows all the sounds you've been using and you saved later. So if I go to my user library, for example, I have a couple of MIDI clips like those MIDI note information clips prepared if I open up the clips and I take this start pad clip, that's a MIDI clip. Before we loaded audio and now we are going to load MIDI and I'm dragging this onto this channel over here and you can see down here you can already see the MIDI information that's being loaded. Just quickly adjusting the length because I only want four bars of it looped. So the length of the clip over here is four bars. And now I can actually play this together with the drum loop. I'm taking this sound off for a minute by just clicking on this knob and deactivating that track. If I want to play those two sounds together without having that one interfere, I can just play this master channel over here. So right now we have an audio sample here playing the beat and we have this MIDI clip sending the MIDI information into this massive device over here playing this whirly pad sound and everything that's played over here and activated is sent to the master channel where the collection of all our tracks has its output on the master channel, this one over here. So this is basically how you use this browser and how you put sounds into your project in the session view. If we go to the arrangement view over here, which is more for editing, this one is really for putting in ideas, just like we did right now. If you go to the arrangement view, we can actually arrange it over time. So down here we have a timeline, as you can see, and we can arrange our clips over this timeline and make them tell a story or tell a song.